foreign currency. Do you need it on a cruise? That's today's topic on Cruising with Eric. Hello cruisers, it's your friend Eric again and today we're going to talk about foreign currency. Earlier today, the nice FedEx man delivered me an envelope with this handful of European money and I posted a picture on the Facebook group for my upcoming cruise and said things are starting to get real. That prompted some questions, whoa, do we need foreign currency? Well, let's talk about foreign currency on cruises in general. If you were to ask me if you needed foreign currency on a cruise, my first question to you would be, where are you going? If your cruise is going to the Caribbean or Mexico or Bermuda, US dollar is 100% fine everywhere you go. Caribbean, Mexico, even those northern South American countries like Roatan, Belize, I guess te technically that's Central America. All of those countries will happily take your US dollars all day, every day. So you don't need to change money if you're going to the Caribbean or Mexico. If you're going to Alaska, you're going to have a stop in either Vancouver and or Victoria. You might want a little bit of Canadian currency, but on the west coast of Canada, I think your US dollars should be okay. If you're going to the eastern side of Canada, Nova Scotia, Quebec, Prince Edward Island, you might want to get a little bit of Canadian currency to use when you're in port. Now on the ship, if your ship is a US based company, that would be Norwegian, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, Princess, all your transactions on the ship are going to be in US dollar, no matter where you are in the world. So that covers the Caribbean and Canada. Let's talk about Europe. If you're going to Southern Europe, the Mediterranean, almost all of those countries use the Euro. I think it would be a good idea to take some Euros with you. That way you can just pay tips and buy little souvenirs, things like that when you're in port. You're just gonna have an easier time if you use Euro. Now for me, I'm going to Northern Europe seven days from now. That cruise starts in Southampton. So I've got pounds sterling for that. Good old Churchill and her late majesty, the queen on that money. Then we're going to Bruges and then Amsterdam. And that's those countries both use the Euro. So I've got some Euros. We're then gonna do three days in the Norwegian fjords. So I got some Norwegian Kron. And then we're going to end up in Iceland for three days. So I got some Icelandic Kron. I would also add if you have, if you go to Denmark, Denmark also has its own money. However, I believe Sweden and Finland are both on the euro. After I posted the picture on Facebook today, Marsha commented, thought we didn't need to exchange money. All ports took credit cards or American money. Yeah, you can use credit cards pretty much everywhere in Europe, and I might as well. But for me, I don't plan on spending a whole lot when I'm in port because I already have shore excursions booked. So I like to have a little bit of money to tip the shore excursion guy, and I like to have a little bit of money to buy refrigerator magnets. So this represents about 200 US dollars, and that's for one, two, five, and that's for eight days in port, plus being in Southampton at the beginning of the cruise. So about 20 US dollars per day is what I calculated when I ordered my money. And again, that's mainly for gratuities and for small souvenirs. If you plan on spending more than that, you can use your credit card pretty much everywhere you go. I would recommend having more than one credit card with you on the trip, though, in case you use one credit card in a country and then you use it in another country and your credit card company flips out and thinks it's fraud and shuts your card down. It'd be really sad if you weren't able to buy or do anything when you're in port because your bank has shut down your credit card, whereas cash is in your pocket. So you don't have to worry about that. When you're giving tips to people, be it the tour guides or whatever, a bartender, a waitress, just think of it this way. If you were a bartender or a waiter or a waitress here in the United States and somebody gave you a tip that was in Canadian money, you would say, oh, gee, thanks. And then you'd have to go about the business of depositing it at the bank and getting money for it. And it's not like you can take it to the grocery store and buy groceries with it. So think of it that way. How would you feel if you were a worker in another country and somebody gave you a tip in cash that wasn't the local currency? So that's why I recommend having a little foreign currency when you go on a cruise. Josh asked, how do you get it? Well, for me, it used to be you could go to some banks and get foreign currency, but a lot of them don't want to deal with it anymore. So with my bank, 
I was able to log in online and I just typed in for search foreign currency and they had a tool for ordering foreign currency. Now they require that I purchase at least 200 US dollars worth and I got about $210 here. So that wasn't really a problem. I just went in, had drop down menus, Great Britain, you know, 25 pounds, Norway, however much, Iceland, however much, Euro, however much. And it gave me the US dollar total. The exchange rate was pretty close to what the standard exchange rate is. And they FedExed it to me overnight for free. So log into your bank and just search for foreign currency and that would be how you can get it. I do figure that at the end of the cruise, I might have a little bit of foreign money left. And what I will do with that is that will go as gratuities to workers on the ship. The crew on the ship, they can take foreign currency and they can deposit it into their onboard account and it doesn't cost them anything. I would add that on this 11 day cruise I'm getting ready to go on, I'm gonna take about $1,000 in US cash and that's primarily for the casino on board, but a lot of times, depending on how much my onboard account is, rather than it going on my credit card, if I have cash left over at the end of the cruise, I'll just go to the guest services desk and pay it off in cash. Now you might say to me, isn't it dangerous to travel with that much cash on you? Well, it is, but I use this handy thing right here. I know it's just a belt, and what I like about this belt is it's all nylon and the belt buckle is plastic and the zipper, I'll show you that in a moment, the zipper is also plastic. So you can go right through TSA with this belt on with no problem. Now what's cool about this belt is it unzips and then you can open it up like so. Might be hard for you to see. You can open it up and you can fold money. I fold it into thirds length, lengthwise and I have, one time I went to Vegas, I had three grand in this thing, in hundreds. And you just zip it back up and you put it on and you can walk right through TSA with a body scanner and all. It's 100% legal, they're not gonna say a word to you. They'll see it, especially on the body scanner, they know what it is, and they can tell by looking at it that it's not $10,000, you can't take more than $10,000 cash. I'll put a link in the description below as to how where you can get one of these belts. I use it all the time when I travel. Even if I'm traveling domestically and not carrying a lot of cash, I wear this belt just because I can leave it on when I go through TSA. All right, that does it for today. Until we meet again, may you avoid the Kraken and have fair winds and following seas.